streaming. I think there's a lot of great streamers out there, and I'm pretty sure a lot of us can agree on that statement. A lot of streamers have the characteristics to be a viral personality on the internet, but there's a lot of streamers who do the most for clout, like they view bot, they have a ring of OnlyFans girls. Okay, I think we all know who I'm talking about now. And some of them like to fake beef and start drama for clips, but this problem's been going on for God knows how long. The whole doing anything for clout meta has been around for ages, and the cycle's only gonna really continue as it gets crazier and that's where i wanted to start off with the first topic how far is it really worth to go for the clip now some streamers know their limit they know when it's not a joke anymore and it's just going too far some people will put their lives at expense or hell even other people's for example there's this dude named squeeze bands i'm pretty sure he just goes around swerves in traffic at like 100 and something miles an hour bro is just weaving through traffic putting all these people's lives at risk and recently of course he was with neon and got into an accident. I'm not showing a clip of it. That shit's age restricted. But this dude's insurance cost must be through the roof. Even Neon, out of all people, was having a heart attack and was saying this is going too far. Neon, out of all people, the dude who faked his own death is on your head right now. And he was screaming at the top of his lungs too. The fact that he even got into a car with him was a death sentence. Why put yours and other people's lives at risk for fame? I just never really understood that. We can't forget the drama that goes down in these kick houses but Bet between jack doherty foozy tube neon the island boys like those are just people that set up beef as like some kind of entertainment obviously yeah this shit's entertaining to laugh at but since everyone knows it's fabricated no one is gonna fuck in the long run and that's the big problem with kick right now a lot of people are a part of this sphere where everything runs on drama and clips and constant action nothing in the stream is authentic it's all fabricated fabricated for clips. Now I understand that streamers obviously want to make their content and streams more entertaining, but it just gets to a point where it's too much and they just plan every little thing just so they can get posted by these Twitter pages. And yeah, it is a marketing strategy they use to stay relevant because if people hate on them, like they're just going to keep talking about them. But when the day comes when they're out of the news, what are they going to do? They're cooked. They don't really have a fan base that's there for them, like purely them and nothing else. Viewers of streams are there for the person usually like for example queso can play any game it doesn't matter what the game is people are still gonna watch because they enjoy his streams and they like his personality and he goes viral despite not fabricating any clips because he is the clip and how good streamers are on kick but the only problem with kick is that their reputation is pretty much fried because when they think kick they think view botters now since kick is a generally new platform and doesn't really have a system in effect where they like can get rid of and filter out bots people can easily view bot and move all the way to the top of kick and now it's pretty obvious when people are view botting their chat is moving slow as hell and it barely moves it's like watching a lean addict trying to get off the couch and that's how slow it's moving just by tuning into these streams you can kind of tell like which ones are botted like you could tell when terminator and the gang pulls up to somebody's stream because usually as the stream's going it will just jump in views dramatically it will go from from like 4,000 at the beginning to like 50 to 100,000. Some people fry them in the chat and of course they don't say anything about it. I don't know if they make money off the bots or what. I don't really understand what the appeal is. Or if they just want to inflate their numbers, I'm not sure. Sometimes when these kick streamers hold a poll, they barely get any votes. They could have like 20,000 viewers and they don't even get over a thousand votes. And I found a video talking about it recently. I thought it was a really good video. It goes more in depth than this one. The link to it will be in the description and it talks about a few people in particular that have already been caught buying bots so it just goes way past the surface of is it alleged like no th like this shit actually is happening this streamer convy got caught buying views and i mean he admitted to it respect for him for admitting to it but then that would mean you'd have to spend like a bunch of money every stream just to keep up with the bots and that's just annoying as hell or the platform's gonna think your statistics are down and you suck that's pretty much what happens <sighs> It's just turning into a view bot. Yo! Yeah, that's Yo! <laughs> yeah. 
Yo! So honestly, there's really no point of doing it. It just keeps you in an endless cycle. And it makes it harder for these kick streamers who are actually working hard to keep people in their stream to get on the homepage. Feels like you're against somebody with aimbot or this nerd with a bunch of mods and hacks. I know if I was streaming and if I was in that situation, yeah, I'd be throwing my control at the wall and raging and shit. And it's annoying as hell, just like some of the chatters. Some people in these streamers chats like actually stalk them. Like this shit is weird, bro. They got like every bit of information on them. As you rise as a streamer, people are just gonna find like old photos of you, old clips of you. It's a part of having like a cult fan base. 99% of people are fine, but it's that 1% that's just like really cultish and just like does all this weird shit. It's like you can't even avoid it. It's just a part of your job. You gotta deal with a bunch of weirdos like this. Now the YouTube comment section is not bad. Like, yeah, like there's some weirdos in there, but a Twitch chat is like 10 times worse, bro. People will tell you you're washed and your stream is dead. If your chat is not as active, your views are down, or you're just having a chill stream, it doesn't matter. People are going to be there to tell you you're washed. Eventually, it's going to get to you because as a streamer or a content creator, you want to grow your community and you obviously want the fan base to be strong. People will dead ass leave stream if they feel like it's quote dead or the person's washed. And by people saying that, it may convince other people in the chat to think that. Now, I tried streaming before and when I did, I had a weird ass chat like I, I don't know if this one's just me or if this is a streamer wide thing But I actually felt violated sometimes bro. It was insane A lot of these people are just trolling, but I'm not trying to read that bro. Fuck no But I don't know a lot of these platforms are just weird with their rules and shit like kick for example The platform literally has no rules. So you have people running around doing stupid shit all the time We got Walmart Jack Doherty's running around stealing people's food and there's some people that I don't know how the hell they're not locked up. There's EDPs lurking the platform that are getting underage girls to... Uh, yeah, it's disgusting, bro. Now, the whole reason why Kick was made is because of Twitch's overabundance of rules and unfair rules towards girl streamers. But I think Kick should have rules in place to get EDPs off of the platform. I think they're finally getting banned, but it literally took Kick months to do this. I feel like it should have been a platform with more fair rules rather than no rules. Because if there's no rules, then a bunch of weird shit is going to go down on there. And that's why everybody says that Kick is degenerate as hell. Now I understand why people wanted a new streaming platform because Twitch's rules are no better. Twitch is in favor of these e-girls that are showing themselves. In January and February, I would open Twitch and the first thing that was shown to me were people participating in this new meta. Twitch wanted, quote, artistic nudity on their platform, whatever the fuck that means. And of course, this shit got out of control as to nobody's surprise. Twitch pretty much just turned into a corn site for the day. And rightfully, so their advertisers were most definitely pissed at them. It was basically a competition to see like who could do the craziest shit without crossing the line. And there's always been metas like this on Twitch. There's the whole hot tub streamer thing and a few more, but this was the worst it's ever gotten. But people will literally get banned for accidentally showing something that's explicit on their stream. Like it was clearly an accident, but they banned them, but not these girls crossing the line. They're like, oh, you know what? You only get banned for a day. Like they did this shit on purpose, clearly. Sometimes days, weeks go by where these streamers are banned for a bullshit reason. And we gotta say free them until it's backwards. It's insane. This has gotta be the biggest double standard I've probably ever seen on social media. But the worst thing about streaming in today's day and age is that people's attention spans are fried. In a world of a bunch of other distractions and technology or whatever, the likelihood of somebody sitting through a stream as just them chilling is so low. People are looking for constant action, constant drama, all this other shit. And because their attention attention span is so cooked, they gotta go from one insane dopamine hit to the next and so on and so forth. This is why some streamers, I guess, like elaborately plan out their stream to have like a bunch of drama and shit. And that's part of the reason why I need like a bunch of visuals going on screen and shit. Because if I had like barely any visual changes, like nobody would watch the video. And that's just the truth. That's how things are today. It's a lot different and there's so much more competition. Some streamers will burn themselves out trying to make every moment moment of the stream super exciting. If you have a stream like that, that's constant action going, 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 people are going to expect that all the time. And you're just going to tire yourself out, bro. I already get tired recording a 10 minute video. I can only imagine a six hour stream keeping energy up for that long and constant action. Nah, bro. I, I just can't do that. I'm not going to sit here and act like I have great attention span. I can't even read a book if I tried. That's why creators 
burn out so quickly. They got to keep up all this energy. And of course, streams with some kind of event planned are going to get more views, but that's what makes them special. It's because they're supposed to only happen like every so often. And now it just feels like every day there's new drama with this person and that person and everybody's beefing. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of people are there to see. And it feels like people have to compete for a certain retention or whatever. They can't just really be themselves. And that's why I made this channel in the first place where I don't have to worry as much about, oh, I have to do topics about this and that. And that's why I made this channel. Like, yeah, I still got to make the content marketable, but it's more of a chill channel. So I feel like I don't have to try as hard. Streaming like many other careers has a bunch of ups and downs. But if you want to see the worst careers, in my opinion, then click on this video right here.